because everyone nowadays for a long time has been saying in their cold email, hey, I see that you have a pulse. I have a product. You should probably buy it. Do you want to book a meeting? And that's why most of your emails get ignored because there's no upfront value. How's it going, guys? Jacob T. Weiner here, the founder of Sculpted. We are a done-for-you clay.com consulting service. We specifically focus on SaaS companies and we help them automate their outbound motion so you can book more pipeline without a gazillion SDRs. And today I want to show you a really cool campaign that I built for one of my, actually my very first official, I would say larger client for my business that helped me kind of get off the ground. So thank you guys is handoffs. They are a startup, a seed stage startup, and they're essentially building a, 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 an AI summary tool that helps you with handoffs, whether you're going from the SDR to the AE or the AE to the customer success person, uh, any handoff in an org, it's often it has a lot of stuff lost in the cracks. I was actually on a customer success onboarding call yesterday with the vendor and it was it was uh it was tough i'll put it that way they didn't really seem to know what they were talking about and i don't think they we already had a call with them before and they didn't really seem to like know what we spoke about last time so this handoffs software solves that problem and uh, essentially it takes all of the information in like let's say gong and your emails and your crm and it creates these handoff summaries and you can also trigger uh, summaries based on key events. So I'm going to give you an example from a customer call, and then I'm going to show you an outbound campaign that we built. It's pretty cool with Clay. So a sales manager at a large company told us that he often has to manually ask his sales reps every single deal. Do you have a sign by date scheduled? Right. As an example, and without actually asking the rep he, and trusting that they do, he has no way to actually know. However, oftentimes a rep will say, yeah, we're going to close this deal, but they don't actually have a specific date in mind to sign a contract, right? Or an actual next step and deals are lost this way, right? And then leadership is asking what's up with this deal, what's going on? And there's no visibility across the org. So it ends up being this game of telephone, things get lost in the, in, in the handoff, as you can see. So what the sales manager said is if I had a way to scan every single call transcript, every single email, as soon as a deal moves into the like signature deal stage, let's say, right? And look for a specific conversation about a specific sign by date. If it's not there, I would love an alert for that, right? Essentially just getting deal, real deal alerts uh, sent to him directly. That's one specific use case, that's one idea. So that's sort of the background on the customer and their value proposition. Now, let me speak out one more concept before I get into the actual email itself. There's an idea that you want to add as much value as possible in the initial email as you can, because everyone nowadays for a long time has been saying in a cold email, Hey, I see that you have a pulse. I have a product. You should probably buy it. Do you want to book a meeting? And that's why most of your emails get ignored because there's no upfront value. So the goal of a cold email should be to add as much value as possible in the initial email and give the person a taste of what they're going to get if they take a call with you. Right? So that's what we did here. I created a sample deal report for somebody and I'm going to send it to them in their email and get them hooked and then make them want to get on a call to get more. So here's how it works. Essentially, I'm going to show you the sequence in one minute and then I'm going to show you the clay table that, that powers it. The subject line here is high stress tech deal update. So this is the company name and then deal update. So then we have this company, high stress tech, pain we're solving. They have high stress working environment with employees frequently reporting burnout, calm.com's mindfulness and relaxation techniques can contribute significantly to employee well-being and productivity. Stage discovery call completed. Next step, proposal call book with head of employee wellness programs in three days. Hi, John. I'm Nick, the founder of Handoffs. We generate automated deal summaries for you and leadership like the example above. No more emergency meetings or surprise deal reviews. This is something that the prospect complained about in the call, so I threw it in there. Want to see how it works? PS, we agree with Gong, Salesforce, HubSpot, et cetera. So I know that they would use Gong, so I, I threw that in there kind of subtly. And uh, this is something, it looks like a deal update. So the person's gonna open it for sure. They're gonna think it's a deal update. And they're gonna see, this is sending to a sales leader at calm.com for their enterprise offering. Now their enterprise offering, you can see here, they specifically, right, give you solutions to keep your workforce healthy. So this deal summary here is actually pretty relevant to what they actually do. It looks like it could be a real deal report. And this title is actually a title that would buy the calm.com enterprise offering. So how did I do this? How did I figure out like, and give them a specific sample of a deal summary and a next step book that's naming the title of the buyer, right? That's going to be custom for every single person. If I'm selling to a different company, this all changes. So how do I do it? 
let's take a peek in my clay table and then we'll wrap this up. So essentially what I'm doing is, actually I have to go into a meeting. So I'm gonna pause here and I'll resume uh, in 30 minutes. Hopefully I remember my train of thought. <laughs> okay, I'm back as you can see half an hour later and it's time to go through the clay table that's powering the deal report summary email. How did we do it? How did we do it? Well, we have a list of Gong customers and uh, their emails and they're, they're validated and everything. Great. So what was next? What did we do next? We started off with a GPT prompt as usual. And I actually just passed in, I think, as if your job is to determine one of websites ideal customers return the name of the company's ideal customer separately return a reason why you think they're an ideal customer of the company the reason should be as specific as possible pretend you are a salesperson telling your manager a specific problem the prospect wanted to solve with your solution okay so i essentially i actually probably could have done a better job of this if i had if i were to do this again i would probably also feed in the company's uh description here sorry i got interrupted again so one more time if I were to do this again from scratch, I would probably include the LinkedIn company description text as part of my input to better prompt the AI, because I'm assuming that they have the websites like data in the in GPT's knowledge base. Um, and th the results look pretty good to me, so I'm not gonna change it, but if I were to do it again, I would probably do that. That being said, it essentially spits out an ideal customer for every single one of these companies. And it also then gives a reason uh, for that company being a customer. And I told it to pretend you are a salesperson telling your manager a specific problem. And that's how I was able to generate this output, right? It comes with the company. And then this is the reason, like, because as if you were telling your sales manager, um, as if you were telling your sales manager, about a specific problem that a prospect has. So that's what this generated. And that's essentially what a deal report is. It's like a salesperson telling his manager why or what's going on with this deal. Like what's the problem, what's the, what's the opportunity summary. So that's what this reason is. And how did I generate this separately? This is the more complicated part. Return your answer in JSON. Return the company name with the company underscore name key. Return your reason with the reason key. So what does this mean? So JSON is essentially um, a format that looks like this. You can see that it has like, uh, it's a standard format for like APIs to, or just like parsing information from like a, between two different systems. Essentially, the company name is stored here in the company name key, company name, colon, Delta Airlines. Reason, Delta Airlines requires a proven platform to provide their customers with instant access to newspapers from around the world during their flights, improving customer satisfaction and experience. Yeah. So that is the example for press reader. What does press reader do? Let's see. Press reader helps your patron discover stories that matter to 7,000 plus global newspapers and magazines all in one app. So Delta Airlines would be wanting to use press reader on their, on their airplanes to give people access to news on the flight or on the flight, right? So that's a pretty good example. Um, let's look at Sprout Social, right? So Sprout Social, what do they do? They're essentially some sort of social media, social media management company, like SaaS company. We enable brands to deliver far, smarter, faster, better business impact from social, right? It's a social media management and analytics software. Okay, so one of their example customers is Nike. Why? Nike can use Sprout Social for efficient management of their extensive social media platforms. This will help provide instant customer service and gain an analytical insight into customer preferences effectively. Okay, a little bit generic, but pretty good. Planet could sell to National Geographic. What does Planet do? Largest Earth Observation Satellite Network delivering a near, near daily global data set. Okay, so, and they're selling to National Geographic, why? National Geographic can leverage planet satellite imagery and insight for their environmental studies, climate change research, and to enhance their nature-focused documentaries with accurate and real-time global data imagery. Boom, right? So this email to Planet, the sales manager, would say um, National Geographic deal summary, right? And then it would, right, so it and it would include this text. That's how we do it. And then lastly, I use a GPT prompt to figure out the title 
of the person who would be buying the software. So at Sprout Social, right? The social media marketing manager at Nike would be buying. Um, at, let's see a company that I know. Do I know any of these? Not really. Press reader, director of partnerships from Delta Airlines. The head of talent acquisition, right? The VP of supply chain planning. Why? Because they're a supply chain company. Great. So that's how this, this um, table works. And then all the outputs go into the output view. I pull the prospect pane, the reason, and the ideal prospect company out into their own columns so I can use them in the email prompt and the email script. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. You enjoyed this uh, deal summary, automated deal summary generation table that I created with Clay. I look forward to building more cool tables like this for handoffs and for other clients. If you are interested in building a, an app on motion with Clay, totally automated and scalable, reach out to me, sculpted.agency. You can book a call and we will chat through your outbound motion. I specifically like to focus on SaaS companies. So if you're interested, let me know. Love the chat. Thanks. Bye. Hey, I'm just recording a quick video to inject in the middle. I don't think I explained why I use the JSON part. If you don't know what JSON is, then that probably was um, a bit confusing for you. So this is the reason why. Essentially, as you can see in the cold email script, I want to use the company name uh, in one part of the email, and I wanted to use the reason in a separate part. So if I did not tell it to return the results in JSON and I just had it res like output a paragraph where it's like company name and then a bunch of text, I wouldn't be able to t take out specific pieces of the output um, and, and run it. So for example, if I remove this part, uh, the JSON section from here, I'll just do that for one, one, one go. Okay, so if I run one of these cells, you're gonna see that's gonna come back and it's going to be basically like a paragraph. And I won't be able to actually pull out those different components into different different columns of my table and use them separately. Whereas with the, um, see, it has this like, it has this kind of weird um, like paragraph style. So the benefit of using JSON is that later on I can extract the, um, I'm gonna rerun this. I can extract the values into their own column. So for example, essentially what I did here is I created these formula columns. So prospect paint. So I essentially said, um, actually I wrote a code. I would say parse the JSON text uh, in, and I would just pass in the GPT column here um, and pull out the, um, what was the prompt? I think it was a uh, company underscore pull out the company underscore name value. Cool. So essentially what I'm telling it to do is, this is the AI formula feature in Clay. I'm telling it to pull out the text that's stored in the key company name. So the company name key, if you remember when I created the prompt over here, I essentially, Use it, create this company name key right here. And I told it to add the company you come up with in this key value. And I told it to add the reason in the reason value. So then later on, when I ask it to take out the company name key value into its own column or the reason key value into its own column, I'm now able to have each one of these results in their own columns that I can use later on in the cold email, uh, as opposed to doing a bunch of different like GPT columns. I can just do it all at once. That saves us money and it keeps the results more consistent. So hopefully that gives you, I guess, some background into why I use the JSON section and I will let the video continue from here.